What's up you guys and welcome back to another video. My name is Giselle and I'm an ultrasound technologist who loves all things Disney and lives in Las Vegas. Today I am at work, first day back at work from my vacation, feeling recharged, refreshed, and all night long I have had a ton of abdomen ultrasounds where every single one of them had gallstones and this got me thinking. I was like, what? Why does everyone have gallstones? Oh my goodness. But that also made me want to get on here, make a video for you guys, and talk about abdomen ultrasounds. I want to give you guys some tips, a little bit of tricks for you to make your images better, and things that you probably don't think about when you are just starting off as a new grad sonographer. So this video hopefully will help some of you guys, especially the ones that haven't been able to scan as much because of COVID or need just a little bit more advice when it comes to scanning. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like it and comment down below if you need any other advice or information and also subscribe to the family if you're not yet a part of the family. So that being said, grab your snacks and your drinks and let's talk about scanning tips for abdomen ultrasounds. To start off, we do abdomen ultrasounds on patients, obviously for pain. Pain is like the number one reason why we do abdominal ultrasounds, but anything else, if they have a history of something, if they have elevated enzymes in the liver or the kidneys or any type of indication that has to do with the abdomen, which includes the pancreas, liver, kidneys, gallbladder, spleen, everything in the abdominal cavity, basically they will order it. The probe you will be used to using is the curved probe. For other machines, they can look a little bit different, but this is what it looks like. And for skinnier patients, you can use the Curve 9, which is up there, but it's a smaller footprint and it's usually for skinnier patients. Or even pediatric abdomens, you can use the 9 linear for little baby bellies. You are gonna make sure you pick the correct probe when starting to do your abdomen ultrasounds. And obviously you're gonna get all the information from the patient, their history and whatnot. And once you get the indication and the history, you go on with your abdomen protocol. Now the abdomen protocol can be different in a lot of places. Generally, you just kind of go off with what you learn in school. And then when you start to go to work, you find out what their protocol is there and then you do the protocol there. I'll tell you how my protocol is and the first couple things that I do when I start to do an abdominal ultrasound. Typically what I do for my protocol first is I start at the pancreas, pancreas and transverse. I show that with color to show the vessels underneath the pancreas, which is the portal vein and the splenic vein. So the portal splenic confluence area, which is typically right underneath the pancreas. And I do those images. Then I turn sad, show the IVC in color, black and white. Sometimes people, Doppler, you don't have to at my hospital. Then I do aorta, proximate, distal, and sag. After the aorta, I will do liver, left lobe, and trans. Sweep through, color, just to show the vessels, make sure they're not dilated. Then sag, liver, right lobe, left lobe, and sweep through. Then I go into the main portal vein, black and white color Doppler, CBD, black and white color, and then gallbladder. And then after, I do the gallbladder and sag and trans. Then I will make the patient turn onto their left side. I'll get the gallbladder and left lateral decube, and then also the liver and left lateral decube. I'll take some pictures of that. If I want to get better pictures of the main portal vein and CBD, I'll do that as well. I'll also do the right kidney. After doing the right kidney with all the color, sag and trans, turn them onto their right side, take a look at their left kidney and spleen depending on which one I can see better first. Measure, color, for everything, obviously you're gonna measure it, put color, Doppler where needed, and that's pretty much the protocol for abdomen. It can take somebody that's a new grad maybe around 30 minutes to 45 minutes to do an abdomen, a complete abdomen, and I think that as you get faster and better at them, you can do them 
in about 10 to 15 minutes. Obviously, you're still looking at things very thoroughly as you get more confident. You wanna make sure you're taking your time with these exams and making sure you're not missing anything, making sure you're getting pictures at the right areas and the right places. Obviously, once you guys are very comfortable with your protocols and scanning a bunch of different types of patients from different body habituses and patients who are in pain or patients who are ventilated, things like that, you're going to have some difficult exams. And so I'm trying to give you guys some tips and things for you to do with your machine or to do with the patient to help you get better imaging as far as abdominal ultrasounds go. So some of the main things you want to do and focus on to get those good quality images is to first adjust your machine. You need to make sure you are adjusting your machine appropriately. So use the things you learned in physics and how to manipulate the images. Use those. My first go-to would be frequency. Change your frequency if you need to because a lot of times when you change your frequency it makes the image look a lot better. Use your TCG on your machine to get rid of echoes or make things look better, make things look prettier. You can also use your auto optimization button which on every machine it's a different button but there is a button that you can push that will auto optimize your image and make it look much better, a little bit cleaner or more crisp. Play with your buttons, play with the machine, change the frequency, and use your TCG. Just kind of manipulate it and get your targeted organ in the middle of your image with your probe. So the next tip would be, you know, move your probe all around. Just because you think someone's liver is going to be right there doesn't mean it's going to be in that position. Sometimes people's livers are sitting up a lot higher, like almost to their chest. Sometimes they're a little bit lower. Sometimes they're more towards the back, more towards the front. I mean, you're going to maybe one day see a patient where the liver is on the opposite side. So really move your probe all around. If you don't see it where you think the organ's going to be, you got to move that probe. You know, kind of get used to moving that probe around and investigating, seeing where things sit. Where's the best position for your probe to see that liver or to see the gallbladder or the kidney? Now, a lot of times you are going to be frustrated by gas, bowel gas that's shadowing. I mean, you have to ask the patient to take a deep breath in and hold it and see if they can do that for you and get a better image for them. And then after, don't forget to let them breathe. But when you have a patient take a big breath in and hold it, that shifts the organ over a little bit more, a little bit better for you to see it in view and also put your probe in between those ribs because we don't want that rib shadowing in your images i mean if you have to absolutely have them in the picture fine but do your best to get good quality imaging and not have any rib shadowing in your pictures another tip i have for you is to turn your patient on their sides a lot of times the best window is when your patient is turned onto their left side or turned onto their right side. So what I do is I take some pictures wherever I can see the organ at first when they're laying supine, get it the best that I can, and later on when I turn them, if I see it better, take those images. You wanna make sure you're elongating the kidney or making sure that the liver can be seen really well so that you can measure it correctly. Now, turning them on their sides can make it much easier, but every patient is different. Different, right? You're going to have to see where the best window is and where you can get it the best. I mean, that's really all you can do. Find the best window, have them take a deep breath in and hold it, take that picture, have them release their breath, have them breathe, and make sure you take that picture. Also, another tip is to use your cine. You can cine back on most machines where you can find the best picture to take from what you were just looking at. Now, most machines have this option where you can cine back and take the best picture that you just took. So use all of these things that the machine does to your advantage. And like I said, move that probe around, change the frequency, make sure the patient is helping you if they can, and that's it. You pretty much can get some good images. I know not every patient is perfect, not every image is gonna be perfect, but your goal is to get very good quality images for the radiologist. If you guys have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. If you have other tips you guys want to share, don't hesitate to share them and put them in the comment section below. We will all learn from each other. We will all learn from all different techs, all different techniques, but these are just some things that you should do and start off doing 
if you can't see certain things and certain organs just kind of search and find make sure you move your probe adjust the frequency and also i forgot what i wanted to say it was literally there in my brain well i had a brain fart and i just honestly can't remember what i was gonna say <laughs> but if i do remember when i'm editing i will put that in here also i'll put things in the description box below but really tips and tricks oh now i do remember what i'm gonna say don't forget to not be afraid to push down really hard you're gonna have to put pressure on these patients you're gonna have to be able to use those muscles and push a little bit harder to get a better picture now i know these patients are going to be in pains most of the time if you work in the hospital a lot of times they're going to be on medication or you know you just kind of have to talk them through it let them know i'm just trying to get the best picture for you it'll be over here shortly and you have to really talk them through these exams especially in the hospital when they're in a lot of pain so that could be for another video but at the end of the day mess with your machine's buttons try to get the best picture get the organ in the best window that you could possibly see and if you can't see it if worse comes to worse the exam is limited due to bowel gas or patient body habitus because there are sometimes things that ultrasound just cannot see through and with that being said i hope you guys found this video helpful hopefully you guys enjoyed this and hopefully you guys want more videos like this let me know in the comments below be kind to one another stay safe stay positive and we'll see you in the next video bye guys Oh, 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 oh,